What's up, everyone? It's Chicks in the Office with Rhea and Fran giving you that Friday energy on a Friday. Woo! I am so sorry my voice sounds this way. I forget what you normally sound like. And it's and I have held off on giving you any shit for it because I know that I come in with an atrocious voice more often than not after weekends. But yours has lasted a ridiculous amount of time. I got, I normally get like three days max where I sound like shit. But you, it's been like two weeks. Mine has been steady for weeks yeah. now. I yeah. lost it and it never came back. I have yeah. no idea what I really sound like. I can't stand listening to my voice yeah. anymore. I, I, let alone think about you guys listening to my it's voice. Just the cold. The well, okay. So here's the thing, and I think that a lot of people listening are going to agree with this 100 there is yes. some sort of sickness going around that is not COVID because yeah we've been tested yep a lot of people in this everyone in this office has been tested for yep. it no COVID yeah no no positive results just being coughing. exposed to germs again yeah everybody's just, just a regular sick. people are coughing left and right for weeks and they don't know why and I think I have an answer to it yeah and I am convinced it's whooping cough because mm. I had whooping cough in high school and it is this to a T. Yeah. You cough so hard that you throw up. Like I was recording the whooping other day. Whooping cough though is like Listen, hard it, to get though. It's isn't very it? hard to get, but there was an outbreak in yeah. my high school. Okay, okay. And so a lot of people had it. So I'm thinking maybe there is just like a nationwide outbreak that nobody's really aware of yet because they're not thinking that people have whooping cough. They're thinking Thank bronchitis. You, Dr. <laughs> Wait until it comes out. Wait until it comes out that this has been whooping cough this yeah. whole time. Everyone's going to be like, wow, she's the smartest bitch on earth. Because You need like a, like a Z-pack or something. No, it's, there's no, that wouldn't even help whooping Would cough. It? Listen, no, I had it in bronchitis? high school. You're not letting me finish why I think it's <laughs> yes. whooping cough and what happened okay. to me and, and what's happening to everybody right now. I would cough. I would, this is when I did cheerleading. I would be in a stunt in the air. I'd cough so hard. I'd have to come down and throw up because I was coughing so hard. That happened to me the other day recording. I was recording and I had to leave the room to yeah. go throw up because I was coughing so hard. But it's I terrible. feel completely fine otherwise. Like I'm living life normally. I don't mm. have body aches. I don't feel down. I'm yeah. not tired. Just a Are fucking- Are you congested at all? barely yeah, like yeah. once in a while but then you look up the symptoms it started off as i was very congested yeah symptoms whooping cough at first it's, it feels like a little common cold and then by the third week you're coughing your ass off mm. and you're throwing up from coughing but you feel fine otherwise so i'm convinced it's whooping cough but some people have gone to the doctor around here and they were told that it's bronchitis yeah which could also be very plausible yeah it could i've it could be bronchitis i, I could be wrong could be bronchitis. Yeah. But they weren't even prescribed like a Z pack or anything. No, it was no. basically just like Mucinex, uh, a Waited nasal out. spray, and you just wait it out. So that's where we're at. It's been waiting it out for a long time. It's just been going around. Yeah, that's where we're at right now. I feel that's the thing though. I feel fucking yeah. great otherwise. I feel great otherwise. We got big plans for the weekend. Your birthday's on Monday. My birthday is on Monday. So I'm feeling great. I feel like I'm going to have a very fun weekend besides the fact that I feel bad people have to listen to my voice. Well, don't feel bad about that. It's really like, it's really not that bad. It's, it's always sounds worse to yourself. Like you hearing your own voice, it always sounds worse than it actually is. That's a good point. I've come to learn that. Because I also feel like. I'm losing my yeah, voice. I feel like I sound sad, but I'm not sad at all. I'm actually yeah. very happy. I'm, yeah. a, I'm smiling right now. You just right can't now, so reach people, a higher octave these I can't. days. Yeah, and I would be right now. I'm yep. at the highest octave. Yeah, but unfortunately, the voice isn't. Yeah, yep. Uh, but yes, it's gonna be a great weekend. Reminder to everyone listening that if you haven't checked out our Outer Banks merch, to go on Fuck, to the I store. Yeah, the uh, store dot barcelosports dot com. Um, you, we have tons of new sweatshirts, long sleeves. I'm wearing my back in the G game t-shirt right now. Probably one of our more popular ones. And then we just also got it in a new color because the other. Colors are starting to sell out a little bit, but they're really great, awesome shirts. Um, and I love the long sleeves. So, yeah, I mean, my uh, favorite, I think I wore the other day in the Bachelor recap, we did that like electric blue yeah. sweatshirt, yeah. the Pogue Life sweatshirt. I love that one. Yes, not to toot our own horns, <laughs> but we picked great colors. I'm sorry. <laughs> cut that out. Can you cut out that cough? You ready? No, no. I don't think I can. Yeah, I can. I'll say what I was saying again. Not to toot our own horns, but we picked out some great colors. 
oh, I'm shit. keeping it all in now. Now I have to keep no. it all in. Yes, I do. It's funny. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. No, it's not funny, though, because no, no, coughing it's funny is because annoying. I, it is, but I'll keep just that one in. If you start coughing a lot, I'll cut them out. Okay, fair enough. But coughing is one. annoying. Okay. I want everyone to know I didn't want that left in there. I don't want any of my coughing in there. I know yeah. it's even gross to talk about, but I do feel like hopefully hit me up if you've been feeling the same way because I feel like hopefully a lot of people can relate to what's yeah. going on right now. Anyways, Francesca, how are you feeling? I didn't ask you. I just I'm so good. selfish of myself. I just started talking about yeah. myself right away. I have um, no complaints. I have been You can't do- give me one thing. I have thing. not been doing anything. Not even a complaint. Anything Work. you're excited about? It, uh, the weekend? <laughs> I don't know. I, don't know. I, I look, it's just a... Um, what am I excited about? Give me some pizzazz. Mm. Knock, knock my socks off right now. I truly have been doing nothing. Any good books? But watching Love <laughs> Island. Thanks. Ha ha, Noah. No, no, that, <laughs> was genuine, that was a the genuine way you, question. The way you said it, though, didn't sound like it. So I was just trying to help you out. You reading anything? <laughs> well, I was just trying to help you out with like, oh, what, what I am what actually I about, seven like? days in June, and I really like it. Okay. Thank so, you. I mean, people yes. listening want to um, hear your book recommendations. So. And... No, I I really like all week. I just have been doing nothing but watch Love Island, like catching up on Love. I'm doing U U S and U K at the same time, which is kind of confusing. But I'm up to date on on both, and I'm not gonna lie. Like there are certain people on U K I really like, but I am almost ready to say that this season of U S has been better than U K. Holy shit! Let me tell you, I haven't watched either, but yeah. now it seems like I'm gonna start with. The girls US. on US are just, I think, looking to fuck shit up a little bit more. I love And I respect that. that. Like, we're at a point, I'm not going to give anything away, but some of the girls right now are in the mindset where they're like, let's break up some couples. Like, let's like, let's like profess feelings to friends. Like, let's like, let's get wild. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Oh, I got to watch. Yeah, exactly. Let's do exactly. it. And, and UK is great. And I always like the, you know, the UK back and forth and the, the banter, one might say. But it's just, I don't, I think it's just the people have not been as great. Like the couples that I really like are not getting a lot of airtime. I'm seeing a lot of Chloe and Toby and I just don't, I, I'm out on those two. God for damn those it, Chloe and Toby. <laughs> I have to catch up on both. I will. Yeah. I will soon enough. All right, let's get into the topics for today's episode. Kanye West will be releasing a new album. It'll be out today. It'll be out. It'll be so out. we're just going to talk a little bit about yep. that. Erica Jane revealed a ton on this week's episode of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills about her ex-husband now, Tom Girardi. Kristen Cavallari cleared up whether or not she was in a love triangle with Austin and Craig on her Instagram story. And it looks like Lala Kent was shading Megan Fox on her Instagram story. Instagram stories are a wild place. Yeah. And we have a great interview with Taylor Misiak from Dave. So let's get into it, starting off with Kanye. There are some days where I am looking forward to one thing and one thing only. It's going home and getting in bed. And I have the best bed in the world, my Helix mattress. I love it so much. It's so comfortable. I got the king size, the Helix Midnight Lux. I just, I my body fits right into it. It's the perfect size, the perfect feel, and it's perfect for me. Why? Because Helix Sleep has a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete, and it matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. So why would you buy a mattress made for someone else? With Helix, you're getting a mattress that you know will be perfect for the way you sleep. Everybody's unique. Helix knows that. And you might, you know, I might sleep in a very different way than you do. I sleep on my side. And I like a, you know, medium feel mattress. You might sleep on your stomach and like your mattress to be really hard. It's different for every person, which is why they have different models to match how you like to sleep. My, like I said, I match with the Helix Midnight Lux mattress. I am absolutely obsessed with it. It is my favorite. So just go to Helix Sleep dot com slash chicks take their two minute sleep quiz and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life they have a 10-year warranty and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk free they'll even pick it up if you don't love it but i promise you you will helix is offering up to 200 dollars off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helix sleep dot com slash chicks that's helix sleep dot com slash chicks for up to 200 dollars off and two free pillows kanye west 
now has released a new yeah. album, Donda. We obviously we haven't hope. listened to it yet. <laughs> yeah, we hope that it is out. Um, you never know, but it does seem like... I hate like, segments like this. <laughs> no, I know. Well, it's so hard with the Friday yep. music drops because we want to talk about it because we didn't know on Monday that Kanye West was like going to have a new mm -hmm. album. This all came together uh, like this week. Now, yes, there have been Dumois posts about this for the last couple of weeks like that there was going to be a new album from this rapper. Obviously, they were alluding to Kanye West, but it's... It's always like a what if. We don't know. Is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? It really seems like it's here. He's been doing listening parties with tons of people, different locations. And like we said, I know hard to do segments like this because right now we're just speculating on what it sounds like. However, we did get a snippet in a commercial and it sounded good. I'm excited because I want the old Kanye West back. Yeah. The good, uh, yeah, I miss the old Kanye. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. We get yeah, it. Yeah, you walked right blah, into Blah, 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 I know. But he used to put out really good music. Yeah. That's just a fact. Then yeah. things started getting a little weird. He was talking about Jesus a lot, which is fine, but like when you're making rap music yeah. and then every song is about Jesus and God, it kind of doesn't fit. Also, he started doing this no cursing thing. Yeah. I don't really like that in my rap either. I don't know. It, it seemed like he was going down a bad path with his music, mm. but I have hope that he's on the right track here. Now, do we kind of hope that he doesn't release something so that this segment is in a wash? Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. Imagine it's just like we're talking about an album that straight up did not come out today. Um, <laughs> that would be yeah. like, so if it doesn't funny. come out, we have to just cut the segment. Yeah. Out. <laughs> no, I actually think we keep no, it. No, we keep it. We now we keep have it. to keep it. Now we absolutely because have to everyone keep it. is invested now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll be like, we thought it was coming and it just didn't. But no, I really think we're gonna get it and. It looks like a, a long track list, a lot of songs. I did read, I think this was also on Duma, that there's apparently a sad song about Kim, which is, Ooh. I feel like... <laughs> I think a lot of people are hoping that his divorce is, like, inspiring this album. It has to, well, but he had I'm a sure lot of it, it has Don some. Probably, like. The best music comes from breakups, whether it's just pop music, yeah. sad music, also... rap music, is just being like, yeah, for fuck sure. that. Is it also stupid of me to say that he can't have put out a bad album named after his mom. Like, I just feel yeah. like it would be, it would be so much worse if the album was terrible and it's named Donda. It, yes, but I also have a feeling that maybe what I'm looking for and other people are looking for from Kanye, we won't get from this album, but it will still be a nice album. I, yeah. I saw people who have listened to it at those like parties and stuff. Yeah. They said a lot of it does sound like early Kanye like rapping style the production is good I saw like Tyler the creator was like in the studio listening yeah. to it like I feel like it's gonna be it's gonna sound like his earlier stuff mixed with like God but like the God will be right, more right, like right. subtle not right, like yes. a gospel album subtle God so, like that song that was in the commercial it was kind of like yeah it was a good song but it is still about God I mean he made Jesus yeah. walks a long time ago that's too yeah. so we forget that's a great yeah. song and also so, like God the song in the commercial is called no breathe. child left behind God ain't gonna judge you he yeah. doesn't judge yeah as Kanye would say there might be a pretty decent message in some of these songs you know the idea behind the commercial that they ran during the NBA final game this this week that was the beats commercial with Shakari Richardson and you know she obviously was just um, disqualified from the Olympics for smoking weed. And she was like such a popular figure going to the Olympics. And they made this whole, you know, the whole commercial mm -hmm. is around her um, and Kanye's songs playing in the back. So they're clearly like they had this very Imagine diligently Imagine the commercial was out. just her smoking a fat blunt yes. to Kanye's music in the back. Yes, no child left behind. <laughs> but it's, it's um I don't know, it seems... Like, they have been planning it f so diligently for this week of, you know, release parties, commercial. He's back on, you know, he posted pictures on social media of um, his, like, kids' names, you know, on the necla chain necklaces and whatnot. And him and Kim were, like, hanging out with the kids last weekend, right, in San Fran doing family activities. So, all seems like maybe good things for you, you Kanye would be right awesome. now. If Drake just drops his album tomorrow, like oh. and just ruined it, that would be the funniest thing ever. I mean, time is a ticking, Drake. Yeah, certified honestly. lover boy was supposed to be out in January. Yeah, 
Drake was supposed to have an album. He, it was and then to drop he, New Year's and, and then, then tore his ACL. And yeah. then it got pushed back. And then he said this summer, 100%. Um, yeah. That's like halfway done. Right, it was like, the end of July. Yeah. Huh. Holy shit. That would no, be, I saw wouldn't. Drake he put wouldn't. on a story today, tomorrow's a new day. But like that could mean No, anything. there's no way. There's no way. There's no way, but how that was yeah, so yeah. funny. Yeah. Would it be? That it would just... be unreal. That would be amazing. Fran's sick thinking about I am, it. I am. She's I sick think to Kanye would honestly like Because can I tell you this? Just be like an all out uh, war. One of my uh, new theories about the whole Drake banging Kim thing yeah. being true is that in one of Drake's new songs, Wants and Needs, he says, I got to bring up the lyrics. Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Because um, I, I, I don't want to fuck it up, but I know the gist of it, but I got to read it. I probably should go link with Yeezy. I need me some Jesus. But as soon as I, as soon as I started confessing my sins, he wouldn't believe us. Mm. So he's saying he needs to link up with Kanye yeah, yeah. because he needs Jesus. But once he started telling him his sins... He wouldn't believe him. Yeah. I feel like it could be true, or Drake is just trying to like stir Kanye up and like play into it. Like, I'm, I'm just sure. Piss off. I'm, pr- I, I feel like that's just an easy target for Drake now to just always include some kind of like, al- you know, allude to it in some way because it gets the people going clearly. So, Donda, <laughs> we'll talk about it on Monday. <laughs> we'll be like, look, on Monday we can say whether we liked it or not if it yeah. actually came out. We will give everyone an update. Yes. The last few episodes of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills have been emotional, to say the least, for Erica Jane. And the one this week, I gotta say, if you haven't watched yet, you know, I'm going to talk about this episode. Just putting that out there. If you care about that, I will be discussing what happened on Wednesday's night episode. Erica, the last, and the episode before that, she broke down to Kyle. Tears, dramatic, like the mascara running down her face, like... It seemed raw, emotional, real. And then we get to this to this dinner. And Erica tells the ladies, you know, she, that she's happy. Not happy, but like it was encouraging that uh, Tom's lawyers had filed for like a mental health like check because... Uh, they were worried about what he was really comprehending and whatnot. And she was like, that's, you know, what I've been noticing for a while now. Basically saying that, you know, she saw him deteriorating and he would not do anything. They just had like a very bizarre power dynamic in their relationship, clearly, where she felt she had to divorce him. She couldn't get him to, you know, go to the doctor, things like that. So... That happens, and then she's telling the women, she's like, oh, remember Tom's car accident from a few years ago? They played the clip, 2017, of Erica with Kyle being like, oh, yo, Tom got into a little accident and broke his ankle. Mm -hmm. Like, totally played it off as not a big deal, like, little accident, broke his ankle, but he's okay. She then goes on to say that, yes, Tom wasn't in a car accident. Yes, Tom broke his ankle. Tom also had a shoulder, collarbone. He was unconscious for 12 hours. 12 hours. The ladies are floored. Cannot believe that this is what they're hearing. It was very hard to follow because then she tries to do like a legitimate, like almost like a hand showing of like the, the switchbacks behind their house and like saying where he was because the way she was delivering it, it was just like unbelievable sentence after the next. It's right. She goes unconscious for 12 hours. And then they're like, oh, my God, like who found him? She's like me. It's like, oh, my God, you found him unconscious in the car. Didn't find him unconscious in the car. Found him on the side of the road. Found him on the side of the road. Was he ejected from the car? This is why I have trouble believing anything really Erica Jane is saying about the situation now because if she was able to hide so much then I know that means she was hiding so many other things she's that nobody very knows good at about. hiding things very good and I will also say maybe she's throwing out all these stories about Tom because she doesn't want to be involved in any of the shit that's happening yeah so now she's just like oh Tom was terrible to me and like he probably was yeah. but at the same time like she's caught in a messy situation i'm so torn now and i am and it is because i am very gullible when it comes to this stuff and like watching her i just like 
it's hard for me to imagine that all this emotion is fake so i'm just like is she finally breaking down and feeling like she can actually shit on tom because she's out of this marriage but it just continued to go where she then said um you know i thought the go how he was gone for a while i thought you know he was with another woman and they're all like what like what it's just one thing after another and why was anyone so shocked by that though? so they weren't because some of them were but so, like kyle kyle was the one to say you know i i she didn't want to like pile on but she was like i will say that i have you know heard things before and everyone was like, yeah, you know, and and Erica made it seem like she knew that and it was not like a hush hush thing. Right. She said that a few years back when, Yol when Yolanda divorced David Foster, it kind of made Erica rethink some things. And she went into Tom's phone, saw tons of messages, pictures. He's with these other women. Um, and so it was just like it's been happening for years. And they were like, oh, why didn't you leave? And she's like, where where was I going to go? Like, it was just like her whole and LA life rental. was yeah yep was controlled by him and he just like dismissed her so much where it's the i don't know like i said i'm now i'm very confused the women clearly believe her at this moment now the previews for the upcoming episodes the coming attractions did make it seem like as more came out i think and more was exposed in the press that some of the women were kind of doubting the truth and i think maybe the husbands were getting involved a little bit like I, there's a clip of mauricio like kind of being like i mean come on like now all this stuff now so i don't know it's it's like i said it's hard for me to tell i do think at some level she did not no and now i only say i i think she knew something shady was going on but just turned a blind eye from it i think that she probably had a feeling she maybe didn't know every single detail there's actually yeah. no way she knew the every way single she detail. describes tom it's like tom did not talk to her about his life i feel like they both were hiding things from each other yeah because there was also those rumors about scooter Braun and erica jane which we're not even gonna entertain right, but just throwing that dismissed. out there obviously yeah. obviously yeah. but I think they were both hiding things from each other because think about it. He was a lot older than her. Yeah, yeah, for and sure. And she's a good looking woman. They're married for 20 years, but I think that their their relationship when she was 28 and met him compared to 48 at the success that she's had is very different. And she talked about how Tom, it felt like Tom really started to resent her for having like any of her own... Um, fame and success and money and like being able to be in the world on her own like she talked about how she didn't really tell anyone about tom not showing up to see her in chicago and when she was on broadway like it was just because he didn't go like on open like he was just like not there you know like there wasn't like a good reason for it he right. just didn't didn't go and that's why none of this really surprises me yeah they it, it's it's just the dynamic of their relationship, though, makes me now feel like Tom didn't tell Erica anything, like, about his business, like, uh, on his day-to-day, -day, like, what his cases looked like. I don't think she knew what that, that, what that was. That is very possible. Yeah. I have a feeling she knew a little bit about what he did yeah, yeah, yeah. with those cases, yeah. but not to a full extent. Right. Or maybe she didn't know at all. We really will never know. But I, know. I don't. I'm so torn I, out. I'm the not, show is completely changed. Like the show, it's just what happens to me every time. The show has like kind of yeah. made me think differently. I don't know. But maybe it'll change again when, when all the women start to not believe her. <laughs> Who knows? Sometimes there's moments when you know you're just not feeling your best. You're feeling a little down. You're not quite sure what's going on. And you want to talk some talk to somebody. Maybe you're not comfortable talking to your family or friends, but you want to unload and you're you're not familiar with therapy. I guys, I so 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 recommend BetterHelp. It's a great way to speak to a therapist and get your your problems out there. 
express yourself, feel like maybe it'll help release some stress and anxiety that you've been having. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's so much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. So if you're just, you know, you're having a week and you're like, I really wish I had someone to talk to. I don't want to go through the problems. You know, it's hard sometimes to match with a therapist or to find someone in person that you really like and you want to talk to. That's why BetterHelp is so easy because you can just hop right on right online and talk to someone. You can unload the stressors and get some unbiased feedback. You'd be pretty surprised at what you might gain from it. See if it's for you. It's really worth a shot if you are debating whether or not you want to jump into therapy. I highly recommend it. Therapy is awesome and BetterHelp is awesome. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash office. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash office. So I feel like we all have been seeing Kristen Cavallari, Austin, Craig, Paige, mm-hmm. all these people out and about, and we're like, what's going on? Why is Kristen Cavallari with them? I think that we all know by now that Craig and Paige seem like they're together. There's something. There's something. I don't know if they're together, but Not they're together, something. but they're 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 talking, yeah. they're flirting. Yeah. We've seen pictures of I, them. I, I don't know if it's like I'm starting to feel like maybe showman's vibes, you know? Yeah, they're together. For- he's filming some. I, he's like been with all the summer house guys, filming. Like I feel like they're just. I don't know if it's. Well, maybe winter house. Yeah, but that, aren't they filming summer house right now? Yeah, yeah. So maybe he's coming over for summer house. Who who knows? Yeah, showman's. Yeah, showman's. But maybe they also are vibing. Yeah, yeah. It's it, very possible. It's very possible that they also just like want to hug up yeah. with each other as well. No, I know. I just feel like we don't. <laughs> we haven't seen too much about them when they haven't been like filming these shows you what know do you I'm mean saying? i i feel like we've seen them out in like new york city uh people on dumois people have yeah like yeah yeah posted photos of them right the last few weeks because they're filming summer house right true yeah. well i mean i think that they were spotted before that yes, as well yes. so i think something i think something's going on with them obviously yeah uh but kristen had to clear up because she said that she is not in a love triangle with austin and craig because those were yeah. rumors as well so I think now, now there's been some confusion and I literally just saw this on Dumois being like, no, the love triangle sh- they were talking about was Kristen, Paige, and Craig. And when like E! News and Page Six picked up Kristen Cavallari's Instagram stories, they said Craig and Austin. But Dumois was saying, no, we were actually talking about Craig and Paige and Kristen. So it makes me think Kristen was alluding to Craig. Because Kristen like uh, directly says like that Instagram gossip account. Right. Very confusing because... They're all involved in some way. <laughs> I would have thought that Kristen and Austin were the two. Or Kristen... Yeah. Was it Kristen and Shep? No, Kristen, uh, and, Kristen Austin. and Austin. I thought it was Kristen and Austin. So for it to be Kristen... Craig and Paige it's changed now to Craig, makes yeah. zero sense to me. Yeah. So do you think that Kristen, maybe that is why Kristen's clearing it up because she's like, guys, it's no, not Craig. it's not Craig and Paige. <laughs> yeah. I'm with Austin. Kristen and Austin and Craig all hang out together a lot. Like you don't see Kristen with just Austin or Kristen with just Craig. Like I feel like most of the time, it's the three of them they're together. Like the three amigos. It's like friends and it's friends thing. And I I'm, I know that there have been times that they've been spotted um, individually, but now it seems like it's switched to Kristen and Craig because there was another post about seeing Chris, seeing Craig in, in uh, Charleston and... They asked about Paige and then they asked about Kristen and she's got another store, an Uncommon James store opening up close to Craig's pillow shop, I think. You know what I think is funny that while this is all going on, they're also airing episodes of The Hills with Kristen Cavallari that nobody's talking about. Everything is just so behind. Like, it's just, it's too behind now. I don't know how we get these reality shows to move it up a little bit, but you just lose interest. Like, 
now we're already all focused on like what's happening while they're filming Summer House. What that's, happened that's on Winter Love House? Island is the best. Yeah, I know. It's just live. What happened on Winter House? We don't know. Like, when's Winter House gonna air? We, yeah, we've actually seen no promos for Winter House. They're they're guarding Winter House. Winter House. <laughs> like, it's just give us Winter House. They're doing it. so I actually long. can't believe the way that they have been guarding this show. Oh, they're doing it so wrong. Remember Imagine when if they Winter cut House the clip? was right now? Like, if Winter House was on right now, it would make so much sense, more sense, and would hype up people so much more for what's happening on Summer House. They're doing it all wrong. Yeah, Bravo, you're doing it all wrong. Uh, it's taken too long. You need a faster turnaround. Like we need, we need winter house and i guess because of real housewives programming they haven't been able to do it like it's just every night is a housewives is on so it doesn't work for this find time, the time. Find, yeah it's very easy around. to find the time because they're replaying chrisley knows best it's yeah. not on bravo <laughs> but sometimes it plays on bravo because of the nbc fam yeah well you know what shut that shit off and put on winter house yeah like just give us winter house we're way too far behind we want to know what's going on there's just too many rumors with chris and craig austin page austin sierra like what's going on there's too many moving pieces and i can't wait for winter house now looks like there's some drama between lala kent and megan fox they do have a history um megan fox and machine gun kelly are in the movie Midnight in the Switchgrass, I believe it is called, right? Yes. Midnight in the Switchgrass. This movie just premiered. This movie um, was produced by Randall Emmett, Lala's fiance. This movie stars Bruce Willis and Emil Hirsch and Megan Fox. Machine Gun Kelly is in this movie. Megan Fox is in this movie. The movie, you know, this is like the set that they met that they, the, they connected and Lala and Randall had MGK and Megan Fox on their podcast last summer I think it was like mm -hmm. they definitely had they went on like a little trip then. yeah like there was definitely a relationship there now Lala seemed to totally shade Megan Fox on Instagram and I I will say of a very petty way which made me giggle because and lala's coming on the show next week so maybe we can ask her about it but Fuck she yes. <laughs> she posts a picture of herself at the movie premiere she's standing in front of the poster she's standing directly in front of megan fox on the movie poster can't see her one bit <laughs> and it's just like it looks like the movie stars lala Kent, and bruce willis and <laughs> and the top left of the movie poster is where megan fox's name is and she used that spot to write, like, so excited for this, like, and put it over Megan Fox's name so you couldn't see her name. And then she also posted, like, all these thank yous and you were so amazing and all these things to, like, so many of the actors that were in the movie except for Megan Fox. Now, Megan Fox claimed she could not be at that premiere because of COVID cases going up. Oh. Yes. And it just seems like, well, that's a bullshit answer. And it, it just and it just seems like you know Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly have been all over all over the place. Yeah, that's why it's a bullshit answer. I think they're you can't be running around yeah. town. I think they're embarrassed in every single state, and then say COVID cases are going up. And I can't so come to can't the premiere. Go. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lala should teach a master class in petty because my lord. Yeah. That do you ever was wonder like what celebrities are vaccinated or not. Like I wonder I if do. Megan Fox is vaccinated. I do wonder. I feel like I don't know. I would guess that she's not, but I would guess no. I would guess off. no also. Some sort of health reasoning. Either that or I don't know. Wait, so I'm not MGK wasn't there either. No. And did but she didn't really shade him. But but Megan Fox is like on the movie poster. Yeah, like yeah. this is like she's a main character. Yeah. Like I don't think Machine Gun Kelly is as much a main character. Megan Fox's movie. Yeah. yeah. Like her name is on the poster. Machine Gun Kelly's name is Maybe not. Maybe the they poster. had another trip to the woods to do ayahuasca and they couldn't make it. I, well, there yeah, was a, sorry, I was an eternal hell. I couldn't there make was it. a <laughs> clip from an Instagram live, I think, or an Instagram story from Machine Gun Kelly where they had alluded to like Oh, I think it was that they, he he was asked about like movies. Shit, I'm going to botch this, but it was juicy. Maybe alluded to like movies that he 
didn't like or regretted making something like that and he was like well there's and then he didn't say anything but like Megan Fox like laughed. like it was like a giggle or something like it was like oh like maybe they're talking about this the, movie oh because as of right now the movie Spicy. has a 10% on Rotten Tomatoes so oh it's, I mean better than uh, a couple I honestly Street. respect it then it's like I respect Megan Fox and MGK for me like I'm not gonna promote this trash movie honestly, she, Megan Fox apparently has not posted about this movie coming out one time like on her Instagram, if you had something really social bad media, out, would anything. You be like promoting it, like a lot. Yeah, so I'm saying like I think she's just anytime I she's don't out. really like something that happens here that I'm in, I promote it way less than yeah. something oh, I really like. I don't think anyone could blame you for that. Yeah, one hundred percent. So I see. Uh, listen, I see both sides of it. I see. I I actually don't really see Lala shading Megan because like it's not Lala's movie, but I understand yeah, but she's sticking know, up for she's her man. Sticking up for Rand. Yeah, she's sticking up for her man's. I get that. I get that. Fifty cents and for I, Megan Fox. And I also, oh my God, one can only hope. But I also get like Megan Fox and MGK being like, we fucking this movie blows, and they're way too cool for that. That's the thing. They're so fucking cool. It's hard to be like, oh, that's so mean to them because you're like oh, that's pretty cool. They hated the movie so much that they said they're not right. going to show up. Respect. Her rep it's disrespectful, but also respect. <laughs> Her rep said, due to the recent California mask mandate and rise of COVID cases, Megan Fox will no longer be attending the premiere tonight. Can you can you picture, wait, this, this is cracking me up. Megan Fox and MGK are laying in bed and they're like, what do we tell them that we can't go to the premiere? What, what should we say? Yeah. And, and, and then one of them goes, oh, oh, the cases are going up. They, they said they got to wear masks know, again. Yeah. Let's we just go with they're, that. They're can't like be wearing masks yeah. again. And they're like, no, it's perfect. It's perfect. Just say the COVID cases are going up. Every, everybody respects a COVID excuse. Yeah. <laughs> It's just they can't be like, hey, sorry, we just really think the movie sucks, so we're not uh, not going to be. Now there. that would be cooler that if they were cool. like, we hate the movie, so we don't want to do it. When have you ever like heard an actor do that? I'm sure it's happened before, but it's only, only really an entourage because like they they are together because of this movie. Like they kind of right. Owe I some do think that they it. like met. Yeah, like they met because on the of set this. of this movie, and like Lala and them could be like we like kind of matched you guys. Yeah, yeah, great. And point. now they're too good. That's a good point. They're too good for them. Yeah, that would piss me off too. Yeah, I set you two up, and you guys aren't even going to show me any fucking respect. Yeah, I'm, I'm not just acting like show up to the premiere. <laughs> I know it was very interesting, but Lala definitely not happy. It was so I love was Lala's such a, pettiness. It was a, a very subtle, perfect dig. It really was. And she le she left the story up for like a couple hours and then she deleted it. Like it wasn't like up for like the full 24 hours. She got what she needed out there. Mm -hmm. We got a great interview with Taylor Misiak coming up. And before we do that, I just want to talk to you guys because I know that you have said it to your friends and friends have said it to you. We should grab a beer when bars start to reopen. Come on, let's grab a drink. Let's hang out. And then guess what? It never comes to fruition. You, do, you don't talk to them. But it is time for that beer and it's time to hold your friends accountable for the beers that they said that you guys would get together. So now Miller Lite, Coors Light, Blue Moon, Peroni, and Leinenkugel are teaming up to help you hold your friends accountable. All you need to do is take a screenshot of a message from a friend saying you should get a beer when this is over and share it on social with hashtag time for that beer. Then head to the bar, upload your receipt for uh, a beer from one of the brands that I just mentioned at timeforthatbeer.com slash rebate. You can see them as well. And the beer is on Molson Coors. Sounds like quite a deal. For more details, you can go to timeforthatbeer.com. I know you all have those texts. Search them in your phone. I know you have them. It's somebody sent you like a happy birthday. And you're like, oh, thanks. Hope you're doing well. And they said, oh, I hope you're doing well, too. When this is all over, we should definitely meet up for a beer. I know you guys have those texts. So don't let your friends off the hook for those beers that they said they're going to get with you. Molson Coors is buying. So now they have no excuse not to make good on the beers that they promised. Have you been dying for that beer? Here's the time. Go check it out. Go to timeforthatbeer.com to get the beer you said you would get on Molson Coors. Celebrate responsibly, everyone. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. All right, everyone, we are here with a very special guest, actress Taylor Mishak. <laughs> Did I get it right? I think you got it. <laughs> you nailed it. Let's go. You nailed it. <laughs> we are so excited to have you. Uh, we absolutely love Dave. And then when we realized how much you also love reality TV, we were like, we got to have her on. 
that's the thing yeah we are kindred spirits the three of us like i love listening to you guys i was just listening to you guys also go through this was a few weeks ago but the like bachelor in paradise cast and you had all the same thoughts that i did so yeah we have the same passion i love it i can't wait to dive into all of that but first we want to talk about what's going on uh with dave this season also i want to know how you got involved with that show because i originally saw you in the pillow talking music video which i think a lot of people originally saw you with Lil Dicky and that, which I've watched that video. I can't even count how many times and I've even told other people a million times like you've got to watch this video so good. But is that how you guys got connected or what's the story behind that? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you. You're responsible for all the views. So yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, so I had uh, auditioned for Pillow Talking like at this point four or five years ago. And at that point, I was already a big Lil Dicky fan. I was obsessed with Lenny Freak. I thought that video was so funny. I joked with my friends about the actress in that video being so good and the lip syncing joke. I was like, oh, where was I that day for that audition? I want it. So then when the Pillow Talking auditions came out, I was like, this is mine i'm sorry everybody i was obsessed with it i was like memorizing the song at my like sister-in-law's baby shower like an insane person so i worked with dave on that music video and it was so fun and great and at the at that point definitely the biggest like acting thing i'd ever done and on set while we're truly like sitting on the bed in between the camera moving He's like, you know what my ultimate dream is, is to like pitch a comedy series about my life and my career. And I was like, oh my God, let me audition to be a tree in that show. (laughs) Like I am already such, I was already such a believer. So I knew like, give this man a show. I think he's so funny and so smart. And then years later, the opportunity to audition for Ali came around. But what's somewhat surprising sometimes, and Dave doesn't even like when I tell this story, but whatever, is that he is, as you could tell in the show, like a very neurotic guy, a very particular person and absolutely a perfectionist. So when I auditioned, I like kept getting called back and kept getting called back and they kept calling more and more girls and more and more girls. And I was wondering like, what's going on? Like normally a callback, they give you direction or they change some things up. And this was just the same thing over and over. And I found out I got Cassie FaceTime me to cast me officially. And he was like, I just statistically speaking, I thought it was insane that the best actor for the part was the actress I already knew. <laughs> like, I just thought somebody else in the city of Los Angeles. Someone had, had, to like, had to compete. <laughs> yeah, he was like, it just it just shocked me that statistically speaking, it was you, but you're, it's obviously yours. It's so yours. So it's funny how much, you know, I think some people from the outside might be like, oh, she probably just like auditioned one time. And it's like, no, girl, I auditioned so many times. <laughs> But he's my biggest like champion. I think that story is really funny because it's just him being particular and it's just surprising. Yeah, that's an amazing story. And that's funny because he was like, it just can't be her. He's probably in the mirror at home like someone else. It's got to be her. her. (laughs) It can't be. (laughs) The poor casting director, she was so sweet to me afterwards. She was like, boy, were we getting annoyed with him because they just kept calling in more and more people. And then they would call me and be like, we think that it's Taylor. And yeah. he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's just double check. And they're like all pulling their hair out. But it's meant to be, we're like such a perfect little pair. So I wouldn't have it any other way. I honestly, for a quick second, didn't know if you guys were dating in real life or not, because I was like, she's in the music video. I'm sure you guys have gotten this before. And like, I bet a lot of people thought that yeah. just when the show started, because it was like, because it is about his life. It's like, ooh, I wonder if this is his real girlfriend. <laughs> right. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Because there's yeah. so much in our our show that blurs the lines. Like, yes. Gata. Gata is Gata. Yeah. And so, and Dave is Dave. And then, yeah, we have a history of working together. I think it's like the number one thing when you Google my name. It's like Taylor Mishak, little dicky girlfriend. <laughs> like something like that. Yeah, I'm but literally going to no, type that just, in right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that is funny. And, and I'm sure people would assume that now. He, Once you're Taylor Mitch Jack, Lil Dicky Lil relationship. Dickie relationship. There you go. That's the third then third thing that shows up. <laughs> See? Yeah. It's Lil Dicky's sure. girlfriend. Is Allie's character? Based on his real life. Yeah, yep. yes. <laughs> very, very funny. And I so you get the role of Allie. And yeah. did you have any idea like what you were signing up for? <laughs> because the first you season guys, and the shit you no guys had to do. Freaking way. <laughs> No, I had no clue because especially we shot the pilot first before the whole series got picked up. 
And Allie in the pilot, like, is not asked to do anything wildly out of the box. We have a great scene where we, like, fight over him tweeting something about getting head. Yeah. And it's all dialogue. It's all her being kind of just like a voice of reason. It's all, it seemed, you know, reasonable behavior. And then our show gets picked up. I'm so excited. And then they hand me a script with, like, several milking tables. Yeah, I was going to say the milking like, table. <laughs> <laughs> but I, what I love about, like, I had no idea you guys, I did it. And when we first, like, I read it in the production office, like, in front of Dave and a couple of the writers, truly them watching me, like, flip pages going, uh-huh, okay, okay. But once I got to the very end where they have, like, a real discussion about intimacy and, like, taking chances being vulnerable with your partner and like being honest and doing things for one another, then the bigger theme made so much sense. And I was like, okay, we're doing absolutely wild and sometimes grotesque things, but there's a point, like we're yeah. doing it for an overall, like really human message, something that's really sweet to his character, to the arc of the show, to the relationships. So they make me do crazy stuff, but I always do it because I believe in the art of the joke and everything that their big picture thinking leads us to. And it obviously has worked. I mean, I was sobbing at the end of the first season of Dave because I was so mm -hmm. invested in it. It also is just real life. Like these little weird moments, obviously people have them in relationships, maybe not as extreme as this relationship <laughs> in the show. But then you have the really sweet moments that you're like almost like taught a lesson in some way, like not in a cheesy way, but yeah. in a perfect way. Also kind of fun to do those things because you're doing it for a TV show. Oh, so fun. And it's such a trusted crew. Like, I love them so much. And everybody believes in it. And everybody's really happy to be there. So even at the most, you'd think, awkward scenes, they're, you know, certainly a little bit awkward. But everybody has such a sense of play and trust with one another that they're really fun to shoot. I will say, I don't know if you guys are caught up on the second season. We, uh, but yes. I, there's, <laughs> a, there's a scene in the second season with Allie and Dave where oh, is that when he I'll throws just say up it, on he, you? he vomits on yeah, my back. Yeah, I was going to bring yeah. that up. Yeah. Fucking gross. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a, yeah, it's so disgusting. Into but an my, open wound. My <laughs> open wound. And it was, yeah. I, as Taylor, that day, like when I read the script, I was like, gross, funny, I get it. But I, my sensitivity to those kinds of gross, weird stunts, I thought was really I don't know. I thought my tolerance was higher. So the day we went to shoot it, I was like, whatever, let's do it. And they like put applesauce in Dave's mouth. Ugh. This is height of COVID, by the way, like height of the pandemic. Yeah. And we take the shot. He spits up the apple juice, uh, applesauce on my bare back. Oh. And I almost threw up. Yeah. I was like, oh, no, 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 this is actually, I didn't, I wasn't really thinking about it. Like it was just in Dave's mouth and now it's on my skin. And like, we, I got it, I got it, I can't. So that was weirdly one of the toughest things that we've had to do, even though it's like sort of the simple. Oh, yeah. Well, I feel even like I'm getting nauseous. No, I know, but I also that. feel like in Dave's mind, he would have loved if you also throw up because they would have just oh, kept that. Yeah. Like they would have been like, oh, now they're That's both the shot. Now they're both like projectile vomiting in the bathroom. Yeah. You totally get that would have been. Yeah. He's going to be mad to hear that I did almost throw up, but I have here <laughs> yeah. nailing it. He's right. going to like, like stick his you... fingers down your throat yeah. next time and, and make you throw up. Don't like, why would you swallow that? Let it out. That's oh god, I, and I thought it too. Like I remember watching watching that episode and just being like, after he throws up and just audibly making a noise, like myself on the couch, being like, "Oh, that's gross." I'm pretty sure I texted yeah. my friends, being like, "Did you guys see the ending of that episode of Dave? It was yeah. fucking gross." <laughs> How much of it is um, scripted versus improv? The the like situations that the characters are in and like I could speak certainly for myself as Ali, like the actual situations that we're in are always crafted by the writers. So they're already just setting us up for so much comedy. And then within that, we try to stay on script a little bit and then have like a big sense of play. Yeah. And so it's great because then a lot of those things are what end up on screen. And we do have writers too on set who are kind of like throwing out ideas and Dave himself is a writer, so he'll be pitching different stuff. But it's the more of us that get in there, the more improv it is. Yeah. Like if you put Santino and Gaeta and Christine and me and Dave, it's like very hard to keep all of us oh, on. Yeah, page Andrew Santino just, is great. <laughs> yeah. Love him. He's so the funny. funniest person alive. So yeah, funny. And I'm sure when fact. you guys like all start joking around, things just escalate and then from there you guys pick up on stuff 
Yeah. And it, yeah, we get reined back in sometimes, but those moments of us getting like so off topic are just so great. Like, I think it's in season one when Gata pulls like a salmon out of his backpack and like <laughs> Santino and him have like a back and forth about the salmon. You guys, that was like seven minutes long and I was peeing my <laughs> pants laughing. It was so good. And to see the like, they pull the highlights from that and put it in the show. Yeah. It's like magic. Well, we loved season one and we're loving season two. The one thing that I feel like we probably aren't loving about season two is there's not enough Ally. So is are we going to get more? Like, are we going to see more of you before the end of this season? Because I know, obviously, this is kind of like Dave's single now and the, the Do- Doja sure. Cat episode. And, like, it's entertaining. But I do like when it's, like, all the friends, like you said, together. And it hasn't been as much of that because of, like, the mm-hmm. strained relationship. Yeah, it is. They're certainly getting creative about the ways to certainly still include Allie, which I really appreciate. (laughs) But I can say that there is there's like some more Allie to come this season that I think is really I'm really looking forward to sharing with people because, you know, there's been so much of them now testing each other's boundaries and figuring out how to be friends and figuring out what this new relationship is. And that sort of comes to a head in the last couple episodes. And Love that's that. all I'll say. Yes. And this screams yeah. on and off relationship to me. Like I yeah. see a third season alley, you know. Well, I'm curious for you guys. I love like in particular asking women if you want them back together or not. Um, So I'm I am always like I always side on like the hopeless romantic side kind of. But uh, Dave would really have to change his ways for me to get there. Like I think Allie shitty is, boyfriend. I think <laughs> Allie can do better than Dave. Yeah, but you appreciate <laughs> yeah. them being together. Yes, he would have to change a little yeah. bit. But, but like I would want Allie still again. involved. So like maybe Allie ends up with like someone else on the show. Like yes. you change it up. <laughs> like there's so she's still included and like gets a happy ending. But it's like be- that person becomes a character. Because I don't know. That is true. It is a great question because. Dave is just not a good boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we I think we can all agree with that. Yeah, big time. Do you feel the same or do you want them to be together on the show? No, I have such complicated feelings yeah. about it because I know I have to like live in a space where they have so much love and chemistry between each other and and that's like so much of the positive energy that people I think like seeing them together and it's a way for the audience to also let themselves really love Dave in these moments where Allie is giving herself permission to love Dave. Yeah. And I think that there's something so special about their relationship. But then I also know if I was Taylor and my friend was Allie, I would be like, what are you doing? Yeah, Don't sure. even be friends with him. This yeah. is too much. Like, this is too much. He, he requires too much work. He's so high maintenance and you could do so much better. So that sort of like outside perspective, I totally get. But it's tough. We've all been there, man. Whether it's us or friends, where there's yeah. a relationship that like has so much love, but has so many circumstantial reasons why it's not mm. working at that time. Definitely. And you think back on that song, you know the the one, oh the song the song yeah yeah the song yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, the song yeah you know you hope that. I don't know. It, and it, like you said, it's hard because Allie definitely brings out the best in Dave. So like Dave has his, some of his best moments with Allie, but still doesn't deserve Allie. Does not deserve Allie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's definitely where we're at. But we also want to chat with you because we know you co-host um, the Flipping Tables podcast. Yeah. Table Love- flipping. Oh, ta- table did flipping I say, what did I say? Alyssa flipping Taylor. Tables. Table flipping. Table flipping. You flipped it. So I flipped fine. it. Which, which is sense. fine because it kind of goes with the name. And now <laughs> the inspiration for that is that a uh, Teresa shout out, obviously. Yes, of Duh. course. Just a nice to big sure. Teresa reference. Yeah, so it's like my my friend and I, Alyssa Littman, she's a comedy writer. We both work in scripted TV and our whole friendship really started from us just like constantly texting back and forth about reality. And we would joke that when we would go to set or go to a writer's room, it was kind of like a guilty pleasure or like a secret. If you like, if you admitted that you watched The Bachelor and you admitted <laughs> that you were watching Love Island. And we were like, that's crazy. So much of us are doing it. It shouldn't yeah. be, we act like, you know, we're in a golden age of scripted television, but we're also in a golden age of reality. Like reality is so good and juicy. So we wanted to start a pod where we just get to chat about it with each other. And then we love interviewing 
uh, other like writers and actors and comedians like about their favorite influential right. reality show or character. And we like focusing on women because we do think, you know, everybody, you could take a college class on Tony Soprano and Teresa Judice yeah. is an icon. And like, say what you want about her. What a wild form of like entertainment she's like produced for people. So we just like kind of like dissecting her the same way one would you know, a Walter White. Yeah. <laughs> I love the name of the podcast yeah. because I remember Fran had not watched Real Housewives of New Jersey and I was like, you have to watch Real yeah. Housewives of New Jersey because you need to watch Teresa flip the table. And then right. she and watched a, all it, the seasons at oh, once. Yeah. And it was a scene that like, you've seen it before. You know, yeah. you've watched, you've yeah. seen GIFs and you've seen it on Twitter and you've seen like posts about it. But really like height of COVID, I barreled through all of New Jersey, Oof. all of Beverly Hills and all of New York. <laughs> so yes, I, I love that just for like, you. <laughs> yeah, just really jumped um, right in. And so like out of out of what's on right now. So like Beverly Hills is on. New York is on. Bachelorette is on. What has love been Island. Like, Love Island Both is on. I have watched nothing but Love Island. US and UK. Yeah. What is like catching your attention the most? Well, I'm watching everything you guys just listed, yeah, yeah. which I'm not proud of. Uh, I mean, as I, we, I will so. say, let's be proud. Yeah, of it. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I will say that the the like Housewives franchise right now that I'm the most obsessed with generally is Potomac, but I can't help but be most looking forward to right now everything that's going on in Beverly Hills. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. like. I could write a dissertation on Erica Jane yeah. right now. Like I, it's so wild that she's trying to use the show to like garner public favor, but is making herself look guiltier. And yeah. it's, and all the while there's still other little dramas going on. And so that's this currently what I'm like most excited to go watch. I haven't even watched this week yet. Okay, so we oh, won't so tell we you won't what happened because we just spent the last, like before you came on, we recorded um, the beginning of this episode and spoke about what went down with Erica um, this week on Wednesday's episode. So we definitely won't Ugh. give anything away. However, I have completely have caught myself falling into the camp of like, oh, maybe she didn't do it. Like, I feel bad for her. Like, maybe she didn't know anything. Like, I'm totally her... The person that she is trying to turn is me. <laughs> and here's the thing. <laughs> and, it's and it's working. And I'm trying not to turn, but I have her telling her she's she's turning. So I'm yeah. like, do I turn You've now? You've just never seen Erica because cry like that ever on this show. But ever. I just I feel like yeah. she might be... Is she that good she, of an actress? She might be saying bad things about Tom so people believe that she didn't really know about Tom. For sure. You know? I think there's so much to, and this conversation is it, right? Which is as an audience member, I I am giving myself whiplash where I'm like, throw her in jail. She's obviously guilty. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm like, why am I eating her alive? And then I go, well, she's because she's like crying too much, but I'm setting her up for failure because when she doesn't cry, we call her cold yep. and not vulnerable and unfeeling. And when she does cry, we're like crocodile tears. This yeah. is so fake. So there's what do I actually want from her? Am I being the people she talks about on the show who just love to watch a downfall? But my current position is that she's so smart and she the like total I didn't know what was going on is too hard for me to believe. And the biggest sign of guilt to me is I think she breadcrumbs Tom's alibi a little bit with this. His vision was going. Mm. He's deteriorating. Yep. She's establishing his defense. Yeah. On her show. Yeah. I'm with why you. would she do that if he hung her out to dry if he really 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 hung her out to dry why would she be helping him I think there's a little bit of both I think that mm. she knew but there is has to be stuff that she didn't know yeah. as well because I, he seen they, yeah. and I think on both ends I think that he has done some shady shit that she doesn't know about and I think that she most definitely has as, as well right and I think she's also yeah. really trying to rail into like the he was deteriorating aspect of this too to prove like why she divorced him in the first place because that was like it was like mm -hmm. oh like is she, did she divorce him to hide the at like hide money which is what they were talking about but now she's like no I'm begging him to go to the doctor he wouldn't go to the doctor like I you know yeah. so trying to be like but do you leave somebody when they're just sick no but <laughs> I know but that just seems to be the crazy relationship that they had where like it's like 
now she's trying to establish the narrative that she could not get Tom to do anything that Tom did not want to do. You know? Yes. And here's my here's my last, first of all, excellent points. Yeah. Second of all, so important to remember, he is the actual criminal. It's oh, just a matter for of how sure. she was. But lastly, I say this as an actor. My biggest like reason for believing her story and her wanting to divorce him is let me tell you if I was on Broadway and playing Roxy Hart in Chicago mm-hmm. and my husband didn't come to see it. I would divorce him in seven seconds. Yeah. Six. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so that that's the biggest like public cue to me. I remember that happening and going, there is trouble in paradise. Old Tom Girardi not going to see her, his Broadway baby. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I 100% I agree. See, the weird thing is so crazy. That was, and, and it's also so, it's really interesting to like study the person that is Erica Jane because she is so great at, making us believe what she's saying right like when mm-hmm. they did that reunion and andy cohen asked like did tom see the show and she was like oh no you know covid and we shut down he was planning to come and he wasn't able to at the end there like he wanted to come to the last shows you totally believed her it wasn't mm-hmm. like it wasn't like mm-hmm. oh tom didn't go to the show like that's got to be a yeah. huge problem you're like oh no tom didn't go to the show it's fine because she made it seem like it was fine And I also think that just Beverly Hills Housewives in general, and I I think it's just that area, they're way better at hiding things and being secretive. Whereas when you look back on the Teresa Judice and Joe Judice situation, it was out. They were both guilty. They both went to jail. Boom, boom, done. Yeah. This is like... Completely agree. A levels. Yeah. No, Beverly Hills is the most concerned with image. Yeah, sure. calculated. Very calculated. There's so much calculation, so much presentation, way less sharing of their lives sure. in an honest sense and we see so many other cities still still doing that and showing real family troubles and real obstacles that are personal obstacles that they're facing and beverly hills is a lot more showy for sure but i'm here for it because it makes it like i don't know pretty yeah and right. weird exactly and like, it's like exactly. we don't have Dark. those lives so we're like oh yeah. what's going on there yeah <laughs> absolutely yeah. and it's it's it feels more like a fake life that you're watching too because it's like they have this lavish lavish lifestyle and i I watch new jersey i'm like that's my family yeah exactly exactly (laughs) i won't i won't i won't give anything away but i will say that there is this very and i do love watching lisa renna is one of my all-time favorites and seeing her like joke about scott disick on the show is (laughs) so funny like there's a there and this i will say there is a point where this i think it might have been this week where she says that harry hamlin woke up at like 7 30 in the morning and looked over to her in bed and just said how did scott disick end up in our lives <laughs> it's just it's too just, funny too funny harry like, you know hamlin. harry hamlin is just like this oh. sweet sweet man who's just like you know what you know my daughter is gonna do what she's gonna do but like how oh, how is this happening he's just Pray out there for us. gardening <laughs> yeah. he's in his little garden and he just stops periodically how did this happen he's making his <laughs> bolognese love- for the whole group <laughs> <laughs> it's like <laughs> Oh man, it just it's it's very entertaining. It is very funny. And then um what was the other? Oh, Bachelorette. Bachelorette, yeah. How how do oh, you yeah, feel I about am Bachelorette? Up on Bachelorette? How how are we feeling? I'm, I'm what do we it, think? I'm liking it a lot more now than I did at the beginning. I was having trouble. I I like Katie. I think I would like her as a person, but I yeah. wasn't loving her in the shoe in this role of Bachelorette and I feel like a lot of things were being pushed on her. And as a larger cast, I wasn't crazy about a lot of the boys. But now I've sort of come around and her final few, I I, I like or have feelings about for certain reasons. Um, and it was tough to see Andrew yeah. go. I, that was like a tough, I like think he's so darling. I think he's so cute. And that, that long goodbye, like... That that got me. I'll admit it. Not proud of it, but yeah, <laughs> I think I, it was stupid. I think a lot of people felt that way. People were shook that she chose Justin instead of Andrew. But what are your feelings about the final few that are left? Who's the favorite in your opinion? Justin is so hot. It would be a national crime if she didn't take him <laughs> to fantasy suites. Like, so hot, but we just, don't. So, we only know that he paints. <laughs> he paints. And that's I, it. That's I, fine. I, he doesn't I, need I to paint in the energy. fantasy suite. 
Remember when, remember when Connor went home and all of the boys cried? Yes. I think Justin had this really like sexy, suave, sad energy where he was like still trying to like be tough about it. And all the other boys are like drowning in tears. And I know that's probably a really toxic masculine thing yeah. for me to say, but I loved it. Like, Justin's my man. I thought he was, I don't know if they're, I don't think they have like the best chemistry and out of everybody, but yeah. I personally But you're a Justin so fan. I... I'm a Justin fan. Yeah. I'm a Justin fan. And then I think Michael A is yeah. so sweet when he FaceTimed with his kid this week. I could yeah. barely watch. It was so, it made my heart too swell. Sweet. Greg. No, oh, too sweet. Probably too sweet. Yeah. We wanted but, Michael A to send himself home so that Katie wouldn't break his heart. Yeah. Like we, you know, like we know that, that Katie, Wish it, that happened. it feels yeah. like Katie is not going to pick like I'd be shocked if Katie picked him which is why we were like oh we hope he just leaves on his own so Katie doesn't we don't have to watch Katie dump him. no is she gonna meet his kid I don't, like, I don't know I don't know and then That's wait yes you are gonna talk about Greg how do you feel about Greg because I think it's a lot of mixed feelings by the public love him or hate him it seems to be the way <sighs> I don't even, I I like, um, I resent that he's such a topic because I yeah. think he is just kind of yes ending whatever she says. Like if you really watch their conversations and she'll be like, and we just have such a connection and he'll be like, yeah, connection. Like he's like falling asleep on dates. He's yeah. just, he's just yes ending whatever she says. And she's just really infatuated with him and he knows it. So he's kind of being dragged around. I do love that she said in the most recent one-on-one, -on -one, she was like, I think you're gonna go home. Yeah. Like, I love that she called him out on that. And he was like, no. So I don't but know, like, shouldn't man. that I'm worry like, her? Kinda... Like, shouldn't that worry her that she has to be like, I'm kind of afraid that you're gonna leave. Like, I feel like that shouldn't be your your t first guy. And I think he it's gives... only gonna make him leave more. I think yeah. he's, he's gonna be like, wait, you're yeah. right. I actually am going to leave. He gives me Judd vibes where mm. Judd from Hannah B's season. Jed. 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 Yes. Jed. Judd. Also. Same thing. Yeah. <laughs> two terrible thing names. Yeah. <laughs> he just like, yeah, two terrible names. Yeah. He just, yes. He just like found yeah. himself at the end and then was like, whoa, I have a girlfriend. <laughs> like, I, I could see Greg being like, whoops, I didn't actually know this was a dating show. Like, yeah. He seems so passive and like, blah. so that's my, that's my take on Greg. Yeah. And who else is left? Blake, Blake. Moines. Oh. <laughs> 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 But we got it. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think just like, keep it at that. Honestly, just, it's just I'm, we're just going to clip that and put that out there for Blake amazing. Moines to don't see. Don't you think that Blake Moines and Katie Sneaky like make so much sense, though? Like, I feel like they're both really quirky. Quirky and sexual. They yes. do. They feel like as much as sometimes it's cringy to me. Yes. Their their moments do feel more authentic yes. to me than than many other sort of bachelor bachelorette combos. But I just think he I can't even. We need you for a like, recap one know? day. We need her to come on for a recap because she's, I know. she's passionate about this. Well, well, what do you guys think is the crazy ending? Do you have a theory? I have a feeling like there is every season a crazy ending. I, I think that she breaks Michael A's heart, which I, like I said, I wish he would have left because I really don't want to yeah. see that happen because that's going to really, really hurt. I think Greg leaves. I think she wants to be with Greg. Greg leaves and then she ends up with Blake. I kind of think she, I, think, wow. I kind of think she might pick Greg and Greg's like, ooh, I'm not proposing. <laughs> And then yeah. that's yeah. it. Like I think like I think like she might pick Greg and they'd be like, ooh, like let's try dating and like being boyfriend, girlfriend, like no proposal, like let's go out. And then like they and then Katie at the final rose will be like, Yeah, we broke up two weeks after that. <laughs> we need yep. a proposal. I know, I, I don't know if we're gonna get one. I don't know. I don't know either. if we're gonna get one. I kinda think she's fallen for Greg big time. I just don't know if she I don't know. It's either that, either that or it's Blake Moines. I'm re and I really kind of hope it's Blake Moines. <laughs> Can't you see Blake? I think it's also hilarious. You guys keep saying Blake Moines. I know. Oh, I know. Oh, we, he like, is the first, first and last, and last guy, name guy. Like, and it's because <laughs> on you... Claire's season, he was called Blake Moines. Like, there were more than uh, one Blake, so they specifically called him Blake yeah. Moines the entire time. Blake Moines. I think I wouldn't be surprised if it got down to Blake Moines. And he's like, you know what? We're getting married. We're, We're getting married right now, right here, right now. And they just like get married. Like that's how they go to Vegas. They, they ride get off. Elvis. They ride <laughs> off like into the animal like conservatorship <laughs> yes. together. Yeah. Yes. That, but we can agree it's not Justin or Michael.
Like I feel like those two. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. And I agree with you guys that I wish Michael was released earlier. (laughs) I know. Yeah, Justin's mine, you guys. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> well, he's probably on the market. So, <laughs> like, I think he's probably on the market. There you if go. He, if he's not, if he didn't go to, uh, if he didn't go to paradise, right. potentially, he could have bachelor potential. I maybe. think he, depending ooh. on his ending. Yeah. Well, you guys said all he does is paint, so I don't know. No, I know, I know. We <laughs> would have to see material. a little bit more You're from like, him. But I feel like we people know would just like him. Paints. Yeah, that's kind. It yeah. really is all we know. Well, Andrew, those expressions, Andrew he's so, like, meme-worthy. Yes. I love Justin's expressions, his, like, weird eyebrow things and, like, looking to the yeah. camera like he's Jim from The Office. I, that, I'm a sucker for that. He did have that going on, actually. He did. Now that now that we bring it up, maybe he did more than paint. He had facial expressions. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so dynamic. Um, okay. We're, we're going to wrap up. My last reality TV question for you is... Is there anything that you're watching right now that maybe is a little obscure that you don't think everybody watches that you highly recommend? And it's reality? Yes. It doesn't have to be reality. It could be it could be scripted TV too. No, no. We, we've covered some weird shows that I've gotten a real kick out of. Let me think for a second. Honestly, <laughs> It's so bizarre, but I found it to be pretty therapeutic and fun to watch. Have you ever heard of Forged in Fire? (laughs) (laughs) No. Sure haven't. (laughs) That was the answer we were looking for. (laughs) I told you, I was like, give me a second, I got you. Forged in Fire on, I believe the History Channel is a competitive sword making show. (laughs) And you, (laughs) it has all the like, pace and sort of vibe of any sort of competition cooking show, but they're making like crazy antique sort of weapons and <laughs> them they fail often. Like the swords will <laughs> flop over or they'll break and, the, and it's just, it's fascinating. And so that it's weird. I'm not telling anybody to binge it, but like it certainly tune in for a episode of Forged in Fire. I am checking out an episode immediately. That sounds hilarious. <laughs> I, I, that was exactly that what was we were the looking perfect for. Answer. That was the perfect answer. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, thank you so much for joining us. Honestly, this was so great. I feel like we need to do some like flipping tables, chicks in the office crossover. We got to get some recaps in. I love talking about reality TV with with plenty of other ladies out there. You guys, this was so easy. Yes, this was (laughs) this was awesome. Um, Thank you so much, and hopefully we talk soon. And we're excited to watch the rest of Dave this season. Thank you, guys. All right, that wraps up today's episode of Chicks in the Office. We hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and subscribe everywhere else you listen to podcasts. Love you guys. And uh, just remember, my birthday is on Monday.